Hey, what is up everyone? It's not just me with ADHD today. I'm also joined by YouTuber Haley's Comment. Hey guys. So Haley is a another fantastic YouTuber who also has ADHD. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel, Haley? Sure. So I make uh, mental health videos as well as just kind of random stuff. So on Tuesdays, I have a series called Coffee Talk, where I talk mostly about my ADHD, but also about my anxiety and depression. And then on Thursdays, I just do like trends or mukbangs or whatever the heck I want. But I try to focus on mental health because I feel like there aren't a lot of upbeat mental health channels. And so I try to like be another one of those people. That's true, and that's awesome, and I love your channel. I've been uh, watching for a while, and everybody on my channel should go check her out right away. But today, because you're another YouTuber, and because I'm starting a new series now that looks into different careers and jobs with people with ADHD, I felt like, why not do YouTube first? So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so how long have you actually known that you've had ADHD? I was diagnosed at the end of my freshman year of high school, so I was like 15 years old. I always had symptoms of it though. <laughs> right. But yeah, so all like high school and college, I knew that I had ADHD. Like how, so how does it affect your day-to-day -day life then? It affects everything. It affects my um, focus. It affects my ability to like switch from task to task, my motivation. It affects my relationship, it affects my organization, um, running late to everything all the time. Pretty much anything you can think of, there's probably a way that my ADHD impacts it. Not only for the worse, but also for the better. YouTube's all you is, is your main thing now, right? Yeah, so I freelance and I teach poetry and whatnot, but YouTube is definitely where I focus all of my time and energy toward. Like, that's my big thing. That's really cool. That's actually a pretty brave thing to uh, make YouTube your main thing. I know, especially because I'm such a small channel, but it's what I love to do, and I know that if I keep on growing my channel, keep on working on it, like, eventually I'll get there, so... It's worth it for me. <laughs> That's right, and it's not so small anymore. I mean, you just hit a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. So proud to be one of those subscribers. So, you know, that's, that's really cool. And I can just see your, your, the quality of what you put out there is amazing. I can just see it going higher and higher for you. So that's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I love your channel as well. I really, really do. You're one of the first channels about ADHD that I ever found. Really? Yeah. Like wow. when I first started my channel, I was like, I got to find ADHD channels because I wanted to see what you guys were doing, you know? And you were one of the first ones that I ever found. Wow, that's that's really cool. What do you think propelled you to a thousand? I think consistency. I was having issues with consistency when I first started for a lot of reasons, but I think a big one was I felt like I needed everything to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to have everything be perfectly edited, you know, everything be hilarious. And like my videos are not perfect if you go back and look at them. Like I'm not saying they were perfect, but I wanted to get as close to that as I could. But right. once I started to realize that consistency is more important than perfection, I started pumping out content a lot quicker. Now I post two times a week, sometimes even more than that. And um, the videos are still just as good as they were before. So I was just focusing on such tiny details before that didn't matter so then I wouldn't end up posting the video or something right. for something super stupid that no one would notice besides me. Yeah, I, I totally get that. And I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked that you're putting out two videos a week. That is something that I just cannot keep up with. It's uh, hard. It's a lot. It's How would you say that your ADHD kind of affects running a YouTube? Because personally for me, it affects a lot of my day-to-day -day running of my YouTube. Uh, so like, what do you think some of the biggest ways that it affects your YouTube? I think that it is beneficial for me in a lot of ways in terms of YouTube because it's something that I can hyper-focus on really easily. So I can sit there and just crank out a video, like edit, edit, edit for hours and hours, do nothing else, don't eat, don't sleep, nothing. Um, and then just have an awesome video afterwards. So it helps me in that way. It helps me come up with like unique ideas. Um, not that anything I've done is that unique, but it's like, I'm always having, I have tons of lists 
everywhere like on my phone and a notebook on my computer of different video ideas I'm never gonna run out of ideas and in terms of like creative editing a lot of people say they like my a lot of people say they like my editing which I feel like I can do because of my ADHD like I do random things that like a neurotypical might not think of in terms of how it affects me negatively starting things always running very very close to my deadlines you know, it's what I find is really interesting is how you just said that you feel like your ADHD helps you with your editing. Yeah. Because personally, I find that my ADHD is the biggest hindrance on my editing. And oh, that's really? because, yeah, and that's because I am so impatient with my ADHD. Like, it makes me so impatient. I just want to get things done as fast as possible. I constantly overlook all of these mistakes and all of these kind of, you know, things aren't cut right because I've just glossed over them. So I end up going back and back each time having to fix the things that I constantly just rush over. I think that's true for me in some aspects of editing. Like I've spelled words wrong in videos and stupid things like that, that I just didn't notice because there isn't spell check and because I don't notice small details like that. But for some reason, I can hyper-focus a lot on editing. And so I really notice every little tiny thing, which, can be actually an annoyance in some ways because it takes me forever to edit because I'm like wanting everything to be perfect. But when I'm able to overcome that, then it's like I can edit really quickly. And yeah, hyperfocus is like a big plus to, uh, I feel like to YouTubers anyway. Your YouTube is based on something that you're passionate about. And I feel like it's easier to hyperfocus on something that's your fo that's like your passion, right? So. Right when you're running an entire YouTube channel on something you're passionate about, it's relatively easy to hyper-focus on. So it is a great, it's a great thing. Yeah, I guess another disadvantage too is running late to things. So like our collab today, I was running late. The last <laughs> collab I did, I was also running late. Um, so in terms of like working with other people, it's hard, but most of YouTube, you're working by yourself. So you're not having to deal with that too much. I wonder, do you, how do you cope with like setting your own schedule then for YouTube? I don't really have too much of a YouTube schedule. I've tried to make one and I've actually just made one the other day. So hopefully I'll be able to like start trying to do that. But I kind of just do it and then I always have to, there's always a deadline. There's two deadlines, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays is when I post. So I know that I have to get it done before Tuesday and Thursday. So I just kind of, I don't know. I don't really have a, like an organized schedule, but it works. But also like, yeah. I wish I had one, but I just don't think like that. Do you, so let me ask you, do you, do you film both videos in at the same time? Sometimes I will, because I think it's easier to bulk film mm -hmm. rather than having to do your setup all over again. But also I don't do like my Tuesday videos are coffee talk videos. So I have this setup. Right. And then my Thursday videos, are just all over the place like sometimes it's a mukbang so then I have to have my table set up or it's you know like doing a trend where it's like I have my tapestry and whatnot so the setup isn't quite the same so like I don't know sometimes I do sometimes I don't but I kind of like to do them separately because I feel like I can I don't like being on camera for too long right I can get spacey after a while yeah I, I feel you. So mukbang videos. I noticed that you do them. That's so like different to everything else that you do normally. Where did that come around? When mukbangs were just becoming really popular, I don't know, I like watching them. I do a lot of like chit chat videos. So I feel like it kind of fits in because a mukbang is just like, you're chit chatting, but like there's also food involved. So I don't know, I just enjoy making them. I have such diverse interests. Mm -hmm. Like I have my passions, but then I'm like all over the place. I love doing different things. I love changing things up. And so um, that's kind of how I came up with my strategy of Tuesdays are mental health videos. So I am like a mental health channel, but then Thursdays I can, I have the freedom to do whatever I want. So I'm not just stuck in this box of I have to do the same thing every single week because right. I don't like doing that. <laughs> so you say that you don't uh, keep to a schedule. That's something that if you watch any video, uh, by any youtuber who is like how to succeed on YouTube or best practices for YouTube and all that all they will tell you is like Everything needs to be scheduled. Make sure you're filming your uh, videos in advance Make sure you're kind of doing it that way and I personally have tried this uh, This year I went set out said to myself. I'm gonna do I'm gonna be like five videos ahead 
Uh, I post once a week. So I was like, I'm going to film five videos every other Saturday and then I'll be way far ahead throughout the year and I'll be able to schedule it. We're like halfway through the year now and I'm weeks behind. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm still filming on a Saturday morning to put a video out Saturday evening. So, you know, it's, it's real hard to keep a schedule, I think, as an ADHD, or don't you think? Yeah, I am definitely always last minute too, but I'm not quite as last minute as you. I definitely don't do it the same day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't like having too many things done in advance. I've tried that. It doesn't work for me because I am I thrive when I have a deadline. Mm -hmm. That's when I can get things done. And when I don't have that deadline or if it's a fake deadline where it's like, oh, it should be by this day, but like it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't have that effect on me. So I need to have an actual deadline in order to get the video done. Or also I'll spend way too much time editing videos that when I don't need to just because I have that extra time. So yeah, I mean it kind of sucks that I don't have a schedule because I would like it for my life in terms of consistency in my life. I'd like to know that, okay, at this time I do this, at this time I do this, so that I can plan other things around it. But when I've tried to do that in the past, you never know how your ADHD symptoms are gonna be. So there are some times where I am super focused and I can just go and edit and edit and edit and like, I don't wanna stop, you know, I don't wanna stop what I'm doing. So I don't have to if I don't have a schedule, you know, I can just keep going. And then on the days where I can't focus worth shit, it's okay because I focused so much the other day, you know? Like I don't have yeah. to work so many hours each day in order to get the thing done as long as I get it done by a certain time. How does script writing go for you? Because I know that that's something that a lot of people when they message me, one of the biggest issues are how do you go from like having an idea to then actually writing out an entire script for it. I don't know that I do script writing per se. I like to do bullet points. So I come up with a whole bunch of different ideas on what I can talk about. Like if I wanna do a video on X, Y, and Z, then I'll come up with a whole bunch of different ideas randomly, like throughout my day when I'm like brushing my teeth or something like that, I'll come up with those ideas. And then I take a minute to sit down and I organize them in a way that I think will make sense. But I don't really, I used to when I first started my channel, but nowadays I don't really write out exactly what I'm going to say because I feel like it, it's a lot more organic on camera if I'm talking like freely, if I don't have to like memorize something or whatnot. Sure. So for me, it's a lot more open-ended but I don't know. It takes a minute to get there because it's really like nerve wracking being on camera, especially in the beginning. So it's like hard to do that right away. You have to kind of learn to be on camera a little bit. That's true. Yeah, you kind of, I, I feel the same way. You kind of settle into it a little bit more. And when I first started out myself, uh, a lot of my stuff was way more scripted than I script it now. I literally, it would be word for word. And I actually, when I first started out, I used to have the sheets in front of me next to the oh, camera really? <laughs> and I would like read from them as I was like doing the script. Then I ended up buying like a teleprompter app for my phone and then I would sit that above my camera and run a little teleprompter above. And then like, as I progressed on and came more comfortable in front of the camera, like you said, I just ended up like, just putting a few points down. I still script a little bit, like I'll script a sentence out, but then it's just for reference now. I'll end up going off on my own tangent now and kind of saying what I think I need to say in the moment. So I totally am with you on that. And it might take a little bit more effort in terms of editing it if you don't say word for word like a script. But I feel like some of the stuff that I say, like I would have never thought about that when I'm scripting it out. So I just kind of like to have it be a bit more organic. Mm -hmm. But I feel you in the fact that it's hard to go from point A to point B of like having this idea and making it come to reality, especially if the video involves researching. Cause a lot of the stuff about like ADHD and whatnot, I already know, like I've, I find this interesting. And so I've researched this in my spare time. But if I have to do like planning of some sort for specifically for a video, I procrastinate. Yeah. Um, a lot on that. I think what you're saying is better actually. I think that if you're, if you're bullet pointing your ideas, I'm trying to think in terms of what would be easier for an ADHD -er, and I think it's probably easier to bullet point your ideas than it is to write out fully what you want because that's when you're gonna hit a roadblock. Whereas uh, 
bullet points are almost still that kind of ideas phase. So you're kind of still, you're not actually having to start writing yet. So you're still write, writing the bullet points. I think that might work out a little bit easier for other people, to be honest. So one thing that uh, I have noticed personally is uh, about my own channel is we tend to have like naturally energetic and personalities as ADHDers, you know, particularly uh, people that are extroverted, but I feel like there's just an extra layer for ADHDers. Do you feel like that helps with your channel? Like it helps with your personality of your channel? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think because people with ADHD are usually very animated, we can get very like, hyped up to talk about things. Mm -hmm. People like that. People want to watch overly animated personalities on the internet. So that helps. I think also we're naturally like funny people. No, I'm not saying I'm hilarious or anything <laughs> like that, but it's it's just like, I don't know. We find humor in things. We're, we're kind of the class clown sort of people. Yeah, I find that quite funny because a couple of videos that I have looked at for ADHDers on YouTube, a lot of it is is kind of driven by doctors and professionals and all that kind of stuff. And myself and you and one or two other YouTubers kind of go down this route of it being a little bit more personalized and more fun. I think that that is a great avenue to go down because when I look at the other YouTubers, like the doctors and stuff, man, that stuff is so long winded and it's so mm -hmm. hard to get through. Like, I don't know personally how another ADHD -er is sitting and watching those videos for the entire 40 minutes or whatever that the video is for fully engaged, you know? So right. I feel like, and I'm hoping you agree that I think that it shape like having ADHD and having an audience that's ADHD, does it kind of shapes the way that you make your videos, do you think? Yeah, 100%. I actually, so some people have told me they don't like my editing because it's so like choppy. I intentionally make it choppy because people with ADHD want it to be like, go, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. But I always try to have something interesting going on either with what I'm saying or how I'm editing it so that it always keeps people's attention. Sometimes I, I fail at that, sometimes I succeed. But that's what I always have in mind when I'm making my videos is like, how long could I pay attention to this for? And also like, so I don't know about you, but I watch pretty much every YouTube video on two times the speed, except people with ADHD a lot of times. People with ADHD will speak really quickly right. a lot of times. So um, like James Charles, it's hard to keep up with him. I don't know <laughs> if I should mention him. He's kind of controversial right now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, for most people, I watch it on two times the speed. But if you watch my videos on two times the speed because everything's so fast paced, it's like almost, it's really hard to keep up with. So I try to have everything like super quick so that um, people stay interested. And yeah, I feel like that's what I try to do with my channel is like have a personality while also educating people because there's too many YouTube channels about ADHD that are just so boring. And it's like, why would anyone yeah. watch this unless you're like a parent of a child or something like yeah. that? But people with ADHD don't wanna watch that. Right, yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's why it's a little bit more relatable to, to be like that personality, you know, instead of just being the educator, which it can be tough to get that line, uh, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about a topic like ADHD, cause it's so, it, I mean, it's a medical condition. Therefore, it's like people, a lot of people are looking for the educational side of it. They're always looking for something to learn about it or something like that. But I think that we almost have tapped into this like unrecognized group of people that are like us that just want to relate to somebody who has ADHD as well. Exactly, exactly. I try to like... I always think of myself as being in the role of being like a big sister. So I want my videos to be like a teenager who has ADHD. Like what could I make that they could relate to and feel like they have a community to belong in? Um, that's kind of how I think about it when I make my videos. That's awesome. And that actually <laughs> brings me on to another topic. We had spoken about how you don't uh, script you don't like film ahead because you like to have the deadlines you like to set yourself the deadlines of you're gonna uh, put a video out on this day and this day a lot of people struggle with setting their own deadlines because that's yeah. where I run into the issue but you know what I find the more like people join your community and the more that you kind of talk with them 
and you answer people back. I find myself becoming more and more obligated to make videos because yeah. I feel like it's not just me anymore that's kind of just making these videos. I'm now making them for the people that are asking for these videos and the people that are waiting for these videos. And I think that that is a motivating factor in how we make our videos. And I think that's a really great thing about the ADHD community as well, don't you think? Yeah, so that's kind of what keeps me going because I'm the same way. If I tell myself, oh, I'm gonna do it on this day, like that doesn't mean anything. No one's holding me accountable to that. Right. But having that accountability of having a channel where I tell people, I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Like, I have to post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And whenever I don't, like, people comment, like, where are you? <laughs> like, I, even though I just have a thousand, people still, like, will reach out to me asking me if I'm okay. Or they'll comment on my videos, like, where have you been? Like, we need a new video. So it really does create accountability in itself. You just have to tell them when you're uploading so that they can hold you accountable to that. All right, so run me through what a day in the life of Haley's comment on a production day is like. Filming mm -hmm. or editing or uh, like all of it? All of it. Okay. Um, well, I wake up, I try to wake up early and then I try to get dressed and like film right away. But filming gives me like quite a bit of anxiety, to be honest. I just always get really, really nervous. And I don't know, it seems like it's gonna be such a big deal. So I'll spend more time getting ready or whatnot. And I'll kind of procrastinate <laughs> a little bit. And then eventually I do actually film. And then I usually take a minute to like go do something else, get a, you know, get a break in and then I'll come back and I'll upload the footage and then I just start editing right away. Usually on the days that I film, I don't completely edit my videos. I'll like start doing it or do like a rough edit as I call it. So just like a straight cut through. And then on another day I'll go back in and add all the special things to it. So like the crop ins, the Ken Burns, the graphics on the screen, like stuff like that. Yeah, so I find the same as you. I find that uh, filming early on is actually really good, uh, especially for an ADHD -er with what you said. With I, I get the same feeling. So like, even though I've done this like hundreds of times, it feels like now, I still feel like this kind of overwhelming like nerves of coming on cam, coming in and doing it and getting on camera and everything. And I know that like. In my mind, I'm thinking I have to come in, I have to set everything up, I have to get the lighting ready, and then I have to come in front, and then I have to film, and I have to be a bigger personality, and all that kind of stuff. It seems like such a big deal. Right? And, and, yeah. and it overwhelms me too, and, I, and that's why I think it's important to get it done early, because to me, that's the best time for me. I'll, I mean, it's probably different for you because you don't take uh, any medication, but I, I probably film about an hour after I take my medication when it's just kicked in, so I'm like, that I'm at my perkiest, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm at that point, it's early in the morning where I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm my best. So at that point is when I, I'll probably film uh, just like you and then I do the same thing too. As soon as I'm finished, I put all of my stuff on my computer and I put a rough cut together uh, just to, you know, cause I, I like to see everything pieced out together first. Then I'll come back to it on another day and then I'll do the cuts because another thing which is a common practice for normal editors, but I think it's a great practice for ADHDers, is when you cut something, go away, and then come back to it again on another day or another hour or a little bit later because you're gonna see things differently to the what you're, because when you're in it and you're constantly editing and stuff, you start to like become a little bit like warped in your, you know, your vision of what you're looking at. So it's good to take a step back and come back in. And especially as an ADHD, because we get so hyper-focused, we're just totally in it, you know? So I do that too, and then and then I come back and do that. But my, uh, my effects aren't as uh, cool as yours though, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I like your videos though, they're yeah. very you. Thank you, yeah, I do try to <laughs> input some of my uh, personality on it. But uh, lastly, I want to ask you what, advice would you give to somebody who's ADHD who wants to start a YouTube channel? I would say that some of the most successful YouTubers have ADHD. So don't think that because you're going to have issues from time to time with your ADHD that you can't do it because it's more of an asset um, than a liability. Is that that saying? That's a saying, right? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like it helps you more than it hurts you. So even though it seems like Oh, it might get in the way. Like, just do it. Cause you're gonna, if, if you like editing, 
then you're gonna be able to hyper focus on it. Ooh. That's not, it's something just overall for anyone wanting to start a YouTube channel. People like think of it mostly as being on camera, but it's like 99% is like editing. So sure. if you don't like editing, then it's not gonna be for you. But if you do, then you're gonna do great and you should do it. I agree. I think it's something that you have to be passionate about. If you look at other videos where people talk about starting a YouTube channel, a lot of it for neurotypical people, they say, well, if you're looking to make money out of it, then don't start YouTube because you're not gonna make money for a very long time. I think the ADHD version of that is, if you're not passionate about doing it, don't do it because you'll lose interest after about 10 minutes. And I, I, that's yeah. the truth. Well, anyway, thank you for coming on uh, my channel. It was really great yes, to have you on you. here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great chatting with you. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun and I'm really excited to see uh, your video. It's gonna be out at the same time. I'm gonna link in my description below Haley's video. Go check out our channel. She's awesome and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.